Well, it's good to be in the house of God tonight. You're glad you're here? Say amen tonight. Glad God saved you. Say amen tonight. Amen. God's done something for you this past week. Answer the prayer. Say amen. Say God is good. He's able. I've not found anything too hard for him. I've not found anything he cannot overcome. There's no circumstance I face in life, nor you face in life, that will ever stump God. And I'm glad he knows what's best for you, and he knows what's best for me. And no matter what we face, we serve a God that can do all things. And don't you ever forget that. The devil's the father of lies. He'll try to lie to you, tell you God don't love you, God don't care for you, and God can't see you through what we're going through. But I'll be honest, my friend, he is a liar to the core. I'm glad my God can do all things. Things. Amen. Let's look together here in John chapter number 12. We'll pick our reading up in verse number 1. I want to share a thought. We're going to read down through verse number 8. I have uh, uh, prayed much over the last few weeks. Uh, I thought I had what God wanted me to preach tonight a few days ago, and uh, the Lord began nudging my heart back to this message here, and I know this is what God has in store tonight. It says, Then Jesus, six days uh, before the Passover came to Bethany, uh, there uh, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. And then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. Then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bare what was put therein. Then said Jesus, Let her alone. Against the day of my burying hath she kept this. For the poor always you have with you. But me, you have not always. Let us pray. Father, we're grateful tonight to be in the house of God. Lord, I'm grateful this evening, Father, that you have saved our souls. Lord, tonight, Father, I thank you that you have loved us with a love, Father, we did not deserve. Lord, a, a love that we did not merit. Lord, a love tonight, dear God and the grace of Almighty God that we do not deserve. But, Father, somehow, Lord, in your infinite wisdom and care and love toward mankind, Lord, you saw fit to love us, and, Lord, saw fit to save us. And, Lord, the Word of God says the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Lord, I'm glad you came and sought us out. Lord, I'm glad you came to where we were. Lord, when we could not save ourselves, nor man ever be able to, you came to where we were. Lord, I pray that you bless in this service tonight. God, take the preaching of your Word. Use it for your glory. Use it for your honor. Lord, may it be a blessing to those in attendance. May the Word of God find a lodging place in our hearts tonight. And we'd leave the house of God different than the Word when we walked in the door. Lord, we'd be revived. We'd be stirred in our soul. Lord, we'd have more zeal than we've ever had in this hour in which we live. Lord, we pray tonight you bless our churches. Bless this dear church. Thank you for Calvary. Lord, I pray, Father, you bless our nation at this hour and this time. Touch our leaders. Lord, I pray that you would move mightily across the shores of America. God, may revival stir in the hearts of God's children one more time. God, may we turn unto thee. Lord, may we seek you. Lord, may we desire, Father, and move of God in our day and in our time. May we not just read of revivals and days gone by. May we not just read of days that God did great things. But, Lord, may we live in the midst of a great move of God. We'll thank you and praise you, give you glory and honor, ask you to bind Satan and the demons of hell, brush aside every opposing force, preach in, through, and all around us tonight. And we ask Ask it in the glorious and wonderful name of Jesus and all of God's children said, Amen and Amen. You may be seated. Now tonight, before I get into the message, I would like to say, uh, I, I love the church. I, I'll tell you, there ain't nothing any greater than coming into God's house. I'm glad the psalmist said, uh, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Not just to the house of God, but into it. There's a great big difference. Get in church, get involved, and I thank God for the church. As a matter of fact, Psalm 84, the Word of God says how loved or, or how amiable are thy tabernacles. And begins to speak of how even the sparrow would find the nest and put it there along the, uh, uh, the church building and above the temple and lay it up there and set a place, even thou 
God with her lay her young there by the altars. Let me tell you tonight, there's no greater place to raise your family than in a good Bible-believing house of God. Hey, it won't warp their minds one bit. This society will tell you, you'll not teach your children what we teach them, or to not preach to them what we preach, or to not tell them the doctrine that we believe. I want to tell you, friend, it won't warp their minds. It'll help them. Glory to God, I'll tell you, get your families in the house of God, nestle that little youngin' down in here. If you got multiple children, I'll tell you, thank God for them. Get them under good preaching. Watch God use them in the days to come. And thank God for God's house. Amen. Glory to God, this is some of the most difficult days. I told my church this morning, I've been pastoring for 16 years. I told my church this is the most trying time that I have ever been in as a pastor. You pray for your man of God. It's the spiritual weight right now upon men of God is amazing. It's, a, it's that way among any Christian. If you're a child of God tonight, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You pray for your pastor. And Satan would love to destroy and love to tear down. I know y'all's church has been through a great uh, uh, obstacle with COVID. I thank God we've had a few folks at our church that have had it. They've been away from the church. We've not gotten it in the church so far. Uh, we did get a little uh, uh, someone in this past week in our school, and we had to call school off for a week. That person is okay, and we're going back into school tomorrow. Uh, but a uh, lot to be careful, a lot to consider. There's a lot of days I've pondered, God, what do I do? And ask, Lord, help us. And I'll tell you, we need some wisdom in this day. You pray for your man of God. He's doing the best and knows that he knows to do for your well-being and for the well-being of the church and most of all for the cause of Christ. So you pray for him. Amen. All right, let's look here in the message tonight. I want to take us into a little uh, a, a short passage of Scripture here in John chapter 12. A wonderful picture, a wonderful story in the Word of God. I read this in my heart and tears come to my eye to think of the love of Mary as she had to Jesus as she began to wash uh, and anoint the feet of Christ with their tears and with the ointment and with their hair. Now here in the scripture we see there are three particular type of people we find here at the supper. Now at this supper right in the shadow of the cross, Jesus' friends have made a supper for him. Uh, and here we see the guests. Uh, this is a perfect, this is a little way of introduction. I'll throw this in. This is a perfect picture of what the church should be. First of all, we find Lazarus is there. Lazarus was one who was dead and is alive. He represents the new convert inside of the house of God. I'm telling you, church, we ought to be after souls of this hour. I've li listen, I've been in church since I was a little boy. I, I got saved when I was 10 years old. I surrendered to preach in 1999. I've been in church about all of my life. I've seen folks come in and I've seen folks go out. I've seen folks swap from here and swap from there. I've seen them get disgruntled down the next road, or down the road a little ways and, and come back to this church and they'll stay there for a little while so something don't go the way they like it. And they head down the country to another church and, and I'm telling you, I've seen folks swap your church members and swap pews and everything else. But the hope of the church, glory to God, is winning the loss of Jesus Christ. Lazarus represents that one that was lost and, or that was dead and is alive. May I remind you, the Word of God said in Ephesians, we were dead in trespasses and sin. But God, aren't you glad? But God showed up in your life. Aren't you glad somebody had enough care for you to pray for you? Aren't you glad somebody invited you down to God's house or knocked on your door and told you about Jesus Christ? Aren't you glad you had a mom or a daddy that prayed for you? Aren't you glad you had grandmas and grandpas uh, that would take you to church and pray for you and want you to see you get saved? Glory to God. We need to win souls in the day in which we live. If you go back to the book of uh, Acts in chapter 11, when you see the, uh, the early church of Antioch, and that church has now the, the great uh, uh, idea of religion and the religious center of the world was shifting from Jerusalem to Antioch. You'll find that early church in Antioch that sent out missionaries, but you'll see how that church grew and time don't give to give me to get into this but we find that early church grew because they won souls to Jesus Christ but we need that in our day not only do we see Lazarus who represents the convert the saved we also find Martha Martha is one that represents a life of service do you know today the church should be serving in our hour and in our day. Boy, there's such a need in America. There's such a need down the street from where you live. There are, there are homes hurting. There are folks hurting. There are folks today that are, are in deep, deep despair. I was listening and reading an article a few weeks ago where uh, the CDC has come out with the latest statistics that they have found in America in the age group from uh, ages of 18 to 24 years of age that one out of four have seriously contemplated suicide during this COVID lockdown. One 
out of four, 25% have seriously considered suicide. Now I'll tell you, Satan's wearing folks' minds out. He's like, today we better make sure, friend, we're serving. I'll tell you, you serve where God puts you. You get a burden for folks. Uh, hey, you do what you can to tell them about Christ. Uh, the church has got a message of hope. We find that Martha represents that one to serve it tonight. I want to focus on Mary. Mary represents worship in the scripture. We see, friend, that we have that one, the new convert. We see we have that one that would serve. But then we see Mary that would represent worship. I'm telling I'll get on that in the latter part of the message tonight. But how we need worship in our service. I appreciate the good choir that I sing tonight. Y'all could have sang a few more. It been all right with me. I like that singing. Glory to God. Appreciate this family singing. Thank God for good singing in the house of the Lord. Amen. Good worship. Now let's look here quickly tonight at four things I want to share with you. And I want to preach on this subject. There is no higher place than at the feet of Jesus. There is no higher place that you'll find than at the feet of Jesus Christ. There are examples in God's word of those who were found at the feet of Christ. In Matthew chapter 15, we see they bring the lame, the blind, the maimed, the dumb, and laid his feet for healing. In Mark chapter 5, we find the gentleman by the name of Jairus who came to Christ to, to beg for help. And we find him at the feet of the Savior because his daughter was dying. We find in Luke chapter 8, a man that we call the maniac of Kadera, the new dude in a rude mood. And this man came to Jesus. And we find this man, listen to me tonight, we find him at the feet of Christ. After Christ saves his soul, after Christ changes his life, glory to God, he's a different man. I'm Hell, he went back into the town and it's, they didn't even recognize it. Is this not the man that one time cut himself? Is this not the man we warned our children not to go around? Is this not the man that we said, don't you have anything to do with him? But yet this man is different. We find him at the feet of Christ. What a picture of a changed man. I'm glad. Glory to God. He said we're a new creature in Christ. We find in Luke chapter 17, there was a leper who fell at the feet thanking him for healing in Luke chapter 7, a harlot washes his feet with tears and her heart is convicted of her sin. In Revelation 1, John falls at his feet as a dead man to speak of the holiness of the Savior. Today, glory to God, you'll find no higher place in your life than when you find yourself at the feet of the Savior. This evening we could preach of all of these, but I want to look at Mary here in just a short few verses. There are a couple things I want you to see about Mary at the feet of Jesus Christ. And I, let me just say this before I get to these four points. If you need something in your life, I'd run to Jesus tonight. You know, so many folks are apt to go run here and run there. They'll go everywhere. They'll try to find every help that's available. Now, listen, programs are great. Those things are, are good. And I'm glad man has a desire to help folks. But I'm telling you, you'll find no greater help than you'll find on an altar somewhere. Whether it's in the house of God or at your home. And you just get down broken before God. And you get at the feet of Christ, friend. You'll find the highest place you'll ever find when you're there at his feet. Let's look quickly at a few things tonight. We see this place at the feet of Christ. Number one is a place of great humility. To bow at the feet of Christ is humbling ourselves and recognizing who he is. May I go ahead and remind you he is the God Almighty. May I go ahead and remind you he is the Word. May I remind you he is all-sufficient, all-knowing, all-powerful. May I remind you who he is tonight. And when we come to him, I'm glad the Word of God says that God has given him a name that is above every name, that in his name every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. But I'm telling you, come to the feet of Christ tonight. You'll come in a place of humility. Proverbs 29, 23, the scripture says, A man's pride shall bring him low. Isaiah 57, 15 said, For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and a humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Micah 6 and 8 said, What doth the Lord require of thee but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with God? Romans 12 and 3 says, For I say, though the gra through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. James 4 10 says humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Jacob said I am not worthy of the least of the mercies. David said who am I O Lord God. King Solomon said and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or to come in. John the Baptist said I must decrease and he must increase. I'm telling you friends tonight the centurion in Matthew chapter 8 said I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof. 
glory to God tonight. Friend, let me tell you, glory, if you're going to come to the feet of Christ, you'll come in a place of humility, a place where we humble ourselves. I'm telling you, you're not going to come in that place filled with pride. Oh, pride goes against the very idea of God. Amen. I'm telling you, we come in the place where, we bro- where we're broken. You ever had a time in your life where you were broken before God? I'm telling you, you nestled up close to Him. Hey, you didn't have enough strength. I'm glad He looked at Paul and said, My strength is made perfect in weakness. You ever been there before where you didn't know what to do or which way to go, how high to go this way or which way to go that way? But thanks be to God, you got on your face before God and you crawled to the feet of Jesus Christ in a broken place of humility. And I'm telling you, you'll come to Him like that. He'll bless you. Amen. You know what the church needs in our hour today? Hey, the land to see in church age in which we live is a church age filled with pride. Right. It's a church age that simply means the rights of the people. We live in a day and an hour when people are more consumed about what they want than what God wants. They're more consumed about what God can do for me than what I can do for God. Hey, it's all about me. If they get their feelings ruffled or they get hurt a little bit, they load up their family in their car and they head down the road. I'm telling you, friend, it's all a man so full of pride. I've never seen a day and an hour when man is so prideful. But God requires that we are broken, that we come before him humble, and we find Mary in the Scripture at the feet of Christ about as humble as a person can get as she took the very hairs of her head and began to wipe the feet of the Savior took the ointment we'll get to in just a moment and began to pour it upon his feet and began to use that precious ointment and she showed her humility if the church wants to see God do something in our day if we want revival the church is going to have to get broken again we have to get broken again don't see much brokenness among God's people anymore you know, I, I, I'm amazed. I read over in Nehemiah. When Nehemiah began to hear of what was happening back down in Jerusalem, yeah. he got so bothered about it, he got broken. You know, I've thought a lot about it. You don't see folks broken much anymore. You don't see the church broken to a place where they're getting somewhere with God and, and, and say, Lord, we sure need you. And, you know, I, I look around today, and I'm just about amazed at what it's going to take to get people bothered about things anymore. You know, you look at Christians today, you don't see them bother. I tell you, if what's going on in our society today doesn't bother you, when they slaughter innocent children in the womb, it ought to bother us. I'm telling you what, when we listen today, it is this a place of humility. And tonight, we must break our and get humble before God and crawl up to Him as low as we can come and say, Lord, Lord, I'm not coming in pride. I can't do nothing on my own tonight. I learned that a long time ago. Hey, man, I'm glad. I'm glad a long time ago I learned I couldn't do a whole lot on my own. I'll never forget them. I surrendered to preach, and God put me in my first church. And I was standing there, one of the dear gentlemen, one of the most spiritual men in my church, died of cancer, watched him die quickly, and uh, they the family drove up and they and the herds came up to the front of the church and had a long walk way down to the side of the road and I was sitting at my first funeral brother Chris and I'll never forget I stood there and I remember fear gripped me and I said I can't do this I don't know that I can do this I'm glad brother Chris the Holy Ghost of God spoke to my heart and said I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me amen and I'm glad friend if you'll realize that I can't do a whole lot and I can't do much on my own but I know a God they can do more in a split second of time than I can ever muster up in a lifetime but we're going to have to come to a place of humility uh, Calvary Baptist tonight you're seeking revival it is a great thing to, oh the psalmist said in 80 Psalm 85 6 Lord will thou not revive us again that thy people may rejoice in thee and tonight it is a commendable thing we should be seeking a move of God in our day our youth our young folks need to see God move we're going to have to get broken and humble before God. Mary's place at the feet of Christ was a great place of humility. She, she, she didn't care who saw her. She didn't care who was there. She, she didn't care. And we'll get to it in a moment that Judas was going to talk about her. She just said, I'm going to get down where's my place. Well, I'm going to lift up my Savior. And I'm going to get broken before God. And you know, I'll tell you, one of the things that stifles the move of God in the church is when folks get fearful of what somebody's going to think. And what somebody's going to say. Hey, listen, just, just get humble before God tonight. Not only is it a place of great humility, but secondly, we see it as a place that bears the heart. In verse number three, it says that Mary took a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. I'm glad that the, what Mary did in the Scripture shows her heart. 
She had a love for Jesus Christ. I'm telling you, her heart, she didn't only pour out her, the ointment, she poured her heart out. Amen. Let me ask you tonight, do you truly love him tonight? I'm telling you, everything about you, I preached this morning in my church on Job, and God gave me a thought on Job, how Job never collapsed in the calamity of life that happened to him. And one of the things that God spoke to my heart about was, was Job's greatest treasure was not his wealth, Job's greatest treasure was not his business. Job's greatest treasure was not even his children. Job's greatest treasure was his relationship with God. And when everything fell apart and everything crumbled in his life, he did not crumble because he had God. And tonight his heart was after the things of God. We find Mary here. She takes an ointment that was very costly. 300 pence was 300 days labor for the average man in this day. This was almost a year's labor that this cost her but yet she was willing to give her most valued possession you listen to me her most valued possession she was willing to pour it out upon the feet of the very son of God she said he means more to me than what the monetary value of this does in other words she took her heart and she poured her heart out on them she said I'm willing to give it to God she says nothing is wasted if it's given to God Judas made a point to express the very fact that this ointment was wasted he said why was this done we should have taken it and sold it and give it to the poor hey Judas began to throw a stone the reason we don't see revival today is because so many are unwilling to come to the feet of the Savior I'm telling you what we need we need to just fall back in love hallelujah with the God of all glory we need to just fall back in love hey man with the Savior that saved us hey the early church left their first love in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and they walked away from them they fell out of love with them. And I'm going to tell you tonight, there's a lot of God's folk walking around today that don't love them like they ought to love them. Hey, listen, they fell out of love a long time ago. I'm telling you, in 1987, I had a friend that introduced me to my wife. Hey, I didn't hardly date anybody in high school. All I cared about was four-wheel drive trucks and lifting them high and lifting weights. That's my, that was my life. That's all I cared about. I didn't want to date nobody. And he told me, Brother Chris, he said, I got a girl I want you to meet. And I went to her church on a Wednesday night. And man, when she walked in the door, I knew that was the girl for me. And I'm telling you, brother, everything I had loved, the gym became secondary. I didn't care about my truck anymore. All I wanted to do was be with this little precious girl. And in 1988, uh, hallelujah, we said I do at an altar. And I'm telling you, that's been uh, 30, well, 32 years uh, uh, that we've been married. I thank God God gave us two precious children, a boy and a girl. Thank God God called my son to preach. He's a youth pastor. I thank God that God saved my daughter. God had given her talent to play the piano and to sing. And then God's been good to this old boy. I'm telling you, if he didn't do another thing for me, I'd have to shout all the way home, glory to God. But I'm telling you, friend, you ought to love. I love my wife. Uh, uh, just so much tonight and I thank God we've grown closer through the years but you know you got to work at it you got to stay in love I'm telling you you got to love one another because you know what happens age happens brother Chris uh, hey our hair begins to fall out uh, wrinkles begin to come we don't look as good as we used to or thought we used to years ago but I'm telling you friend we got to work at it I'm telling you Christian tonight fall back in love with God if you don't love him tonight like you one time loved him hey if you say preacher how do I know I'm backslidden away from God if you can remember a day that you loved them more than you love them now. If you can remember a day you served them greater than you serve them now. If you can remember a day that you he was the apple of your eye and you could not stand to be away from God or away from the church or the things of God and you're not there tonight, I'd find the place on an altar at the end of this service. You don't have to wait to then. You come now if you want to. God draws you. Listen and get your heart right. We're seeking revival tonight. I want to be lifted up at the feet of Christ. It's the highest place you'll find. Tonight someone... Unwilling to give their best to God is unwilling to bow at the feet of the Savior. Mary gave the very best she had. She didn't hold anything back, Brother Chris. She poured, she poured out her heart. She poured out a costly ointment that many would have gave a year's paid wages just to have. But she said, I'm going to give it to him. Let me ask you tonight, where's your heart at? Do you love him like that? I'm telling you, are you willing tonight to come humbly to him? Are you willing to pour your heart out and say, Lord, I love you tonight? Oh, glory to God. You ever stop and thought about the fact? Uh, he told uh, over there, Jeremiah, he said, I've loved thee with an everlasting love. 
You ever thought about how much God loved you? Have you ever thought about how much He cared for you? Hey, listen, we didn't do a thing to deserve it tonight, but God loved us. All the least we can do is come to Him and say, Lord, I'm going to give you my heart. Lord, I want to pour it. I want to do something for the cause of Christ. Not only was a place that the heart is given, but we find thirdly, look with me in chapter verse 4 and verse 5. I want to, I want to hone in here for just a moment. It said, then said one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? We find the third thing tonight. That this is also the feet of Christ was a great place of hostility at this particular time in the life of Mary. Why? Because Judas. Judas didn't like what she did. According to Scripture, he was a little bit uh, uh, grieved over the fact that she would take such a pricely ointment right. and pour it on the feet right. of the Savior. Right. And said, you know, we should uh, take that and give it to the poor. He wasn't caring about the poor. Right. He was just upset that Mary had poured her heart out to him. She was just upset that Mary came to Jesus with such love and compassion that she was willing to give everything that she had, her most valued prize, possession in her life. She said, I'm going to pour it out on the Savior. But old Judas got a little upset. Judas was so outdone with this. Hey, listen tonight. Not everybody, please listen to me this evening, will be thrilled when you come to the feet of Jesus Christ. You know what I've heard people say before? Well, you know that. Fella, he just took it a little too far. Yeah. He, just got a little, he, just, he just got a little extreme. You know, he, he got saved and got on fire for God. And next thing you know, uh, he's down at church all the time. He uh, reads his Bible. He prays. He witnesses. Uh, he'll worship God. He'll sing in the choir. And they'll say, you know, he's gone just a little bit too far. That's where Judas was at. And I'll be honest with you tonight, you come nestle up to the feet of Christ, not everybody's going to be thrilled when you come there. They don't be thrilled. A lot of folks say, well, they're just too religious. They're just too religious, you know. Uh, you know, I've heard people say this, and they, they claim out down at our church, you know, I've heard people say many times uh, to some of our folks in our church, man, why y'all got to have church all the time? Y'all go to church more than anybody I've ever seen. We just have Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, and uh, we have a couple revival meetings a, a, a year. And uh, we do things down at the church, and I've heard people say, man, I tell you what, I go one time a week, and that's all I need. Oh, glory to God, I'm not going to go there tonight. But you no, know, folks say just too religious, just too religious. It's gone a little bit too far, gone too far. It's a place of hostility. My son was sharing with me a good while back uh, with these youth group there at the church. They went to a, a, uh, the, one of the Brother C.T.'s uh, conferences, and his kids, several of the kids got saved in their youth group. And God was moving. He said he'd never seen his young and uh, his youth so fired up. He said they were begging to sing at church, doing all this thing. He said, I was absolutely astonished at how the parents began to throw water on the very fact that God had done something in them kids' lives. And they thought, well, my kid's gone a little bit too extreme. My kid's gone a little bit too far. What it was, mom and daddy was under conviction because the child had something they didn't have. Hey, I'm telling you tonight, it will be a place of hostility. Okay, if your children want to nestle up to them, let me say something, mom and dad, tonight. Best place your young and can get is somewhere close to Jesus. Hey, man, I tell you, we ought to be more excited that our children are willing to come to Christ and willing to do something for God than they are to win the world champion Fortnite competition. Hey, we ought to be more excited that they can do that, that they can sit on a computer and do all the things that go on. I'm telling you, encourage your children to come to Christ and get close to them. Friend, he'll be the best friend. Young person tonight, he'll be the best friend you'll ever have in life. He'll love you like nobody ever loved you. Hey, he'll be there when your friends say, I don't want to be with you anymore. He'll be there when everybody walks away from you. He'll love you. And I'm telling you, Mom and Daddy, we have given our children everything in the world. We've taught them this and taught them that. It's time we teach them about Christ. Oh, glory to God. But I'm telling you, it'll be a hostile place. There have been times we get close. I've got family that don't like to, how close we are with God. I've had a have family on my father's side that talk about us. Oh, yeah, mom and dad. My mom and dad carried us boys to church. I'm glad. I, you know, I had, you ever heard said I had that drug, you had a drug problem. And I had a drug problem when I grew up. Mom and daddy drug me to the house of God. Hallelujah to God. Isn't that wonderful? I'm glad mom and daddy loaded us up in the car 
And I got up on Sunday morning and didn't wonder whether we were going to church or not. Didn't walk in there and wake mom and daddy up in the bed and say, hey, are we going to church today? No, on Sunday morning, glory to God, knew where we were heading down to God's house. And so this evening, we ought to be thankful for a place that we can come to. Listen, tonight, there are many who will criticize those who are unwilling to do what you're willing to do. Hey, if you get close to God, they'll criticize you. Hey, if you go a little further with God, hey, they'll say, oh, you know, they're not, see, they're not willing to pay that price. They're not willing to go that far. And they'll talk about you. I've been there. I know. It seems today that most of the time in the Word, you can read through and you'll find somebody who always would criticize somebody that came to Christ. Amen. So tonight it was a place that was hostile here, and oh, Judas didn't like it. I want to tell you tonight, don't worry about what somebody may think if you get close to Christ. You know, I, I, the old saying goes, when he's all you got, he's all you need. Amen. Amen, friend, you may just find your place in life sometime, and ain't nobody else with you. You may find your place. I like what the Apostle Paul said. He said that all men have forsaken me. He said no man stood with me, but he said notwithstanding God stood with me. I'll tell you, it'll be the best friend you ever have. I'm glad. I'm glad I got saved when I was 10 years old. Said, preacher, you've done everything right? Absolutely not. I grew cold many times in my life. Walked away from God many times. Did things as a teenager I shouldn't have done. But I'm glad God's infinite mercy and grace and God's willing to forgive our sin and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. I'm sure I'm thankful of that. But I'm going to tell you, I found the best friend in my life. Glory to God when I met him. Hallelujah. If you know what I'm talking about tonight, if you're saved. But listen, here Mary comes to Christ in this place of Jesus' feet. And it becomes a place where she's talked about because she does it. And Judas did not like it. Tonight, listen, young person, don't worry about what the kid down at the school or your neighbor down the road says. Man, it's encouraging to see these young folk in here tonight. You keep serving Christ. You see you love them. I'm telling you, he'll help you through life like nobody ever will. You'll have a relationship you'll never regret. Amen. I tell you, I've done a lot of things in life I've regretted. I can, there's a lot of things I'd like to be. I guarantee you, every adult sitting here today, and even some of our young folk in here, if you could go back just a little while, you'd redo some things. So you wish you could redo some things that you did. I sure have. There's things I regretted. But I'm going to tell you what, I've never regretted a moment, yep. nor even a second, but a moment. The morning that I walked to an altar and said, God, would you save me? I'll tell you the greatest thing that ever happened in my life. Never got over it. Amen. Or not ever get over the day you got saved. So we find that Mary finds out it's a place of, of great hostility. Mom and dad, keep your families in church, even if they talk about you down there all down the road. Even if, you know, I've heard people say, Well, you know, I wouldn't raise my children that way. Mm. They don't go their way. I think I'll go the way the Word of God says. Yeah. Listen, just go God's way. You won't go wrong going God's way. Amen. Amen. It's proved the test of time. You know, we've we run our youngins today, haven't we? Well, we're living in a day and time. I'll tell you what's going on in the streets of America today. Is a bunch of youngs that never got their fannies worn out. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. We need a bunch of moms and daddies to go out and whoop some fanny out on the, on the streets of America right now and straighten some of these young kids out. Glory to God, I'm glad. Listen, the Word of God tells us how to raise our families. tells us how we ought to marry. Amen. It tells us how we ought to live our lives. And tonight, listen, you'll be shamed for doing that. Uh, you'll be shamed. If I tell you, you try to stand up for Christ, so this community, this world will try to shame you. You take a stand for Jesus down at the workplace. You take a stand for Christ down at the, down at the local school somewhere. They'll shame you. I'm telling you, friend, listen, it's happened all through eternity, all through time. Mary was looked at and put down by Judas because she came to the feet of Christ. Amen. Amen. We not only find it was a place of great hostility, I want you to see, fourthly, it is a place of honor. Look at me in verse number 8. And not honor like we think, but I want you to look here. Jesus tells them in verse 7, said, let her alone. Let her alone, for against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. You see, Mary's act brought honor and adoration to the Son of God. You see, we often come crawling to the feet of Christ when something happens in our life. And some great peril happens or some great tribulation happens or some great problem happens. But I'm telling you, you come for help. But when we come to Him, Brother Chris, it brings adoration unto the Son of God. May I say something tonight? He never gets tired of you coming to Him. 
You know, in this life, we as human nature, sometimes we grow weary of someone or somebody that comes constantly. But God never draws weary of you coming to his feet. I don't care how many days, how many weeks, how many times you come in a day. He always wants you to come. For he tells us in his word to cast all of your care on him. For he cares for you. Not part of it, a little bit of it, all of it. And you come often. Listen, God loves for you to come to him because it brings adoration and glory unto him. What Mary did here brought glory unto him. I, I want to share because it fits right here. And I don't, I don't want to labor on too long. But let me just share something with you. I'm, I'll tell you, uh, I went, um, over the last few years, uh, man, I've seen, God, I've seen Satan fight and, and work. And, and uh, my, my son and daughter-in-law, I've got three precious little grand boys, and uh, they are two, three, and four years old. But my, my son's little boy is in the middle, middle age of our grandkids. Little Braxton was born, and after about a year, they began to realize some things weren't right. And uh, they began to run tests, and doctors did every test they could find. And he came back normal. They could not find anything. At about two years of age, uh, he reached a point that there was something definitely not right, and uh, they finally decided to do genetic testing. And uh, they got into genetics, and genetic testing can be a scary thing. You can play God with that if you're not careful. And, but anyway, they went far enough to find out what was wrong. And our little grandson has got a gene mutation. And at the time he was diagnosed, it was so rare, there were only 16 known cases in the world. And uh, little Braxton is walking he's three years old he does not eat normal food he does not talk he is nonverbal, and uh, he is a handful for them and I've watched my son <laughs> glory to God go to the feet of Christ so many times over their little boy I've wept myself sore on an altar in the house of God over little Braxton that God would make anointment that God would do something, some great miracle in his life. But I heard my son, he, got to, he preached last Sunday, and I was listening to him on the live feed of their church. We're, we're having our services at 10, and they're still doing 11. And uh, we were driving down the road and had it on, and it was coming over the Bluetooth on the car, and we were listening to it. And, and uh, I heard my son begin to share with the church all they'd gone through with their little boy. But he began to praise Christ, yeah. even for what they're going through. And I've told my wife, I felt so sorry, and nobody knows the pain that they feel to sit in a birthday party and watch other little kids run around and have everything normal, and their little boy cannot even get up and go. But yet he still comes to the feet of Christ because it brings honor to God. It brings honor to Him. You know, there's a lot of things in our life that will break you down, and it will bring you to a point of tears and heartbreak. But don't you ever quit coming to the feet of Jesus. Because when we do, it lifts him up. Because we recognize that he's my help. And he's my strength. He's the only one I can go to. He's my only help. Nobody else has an answer, but my God does. And you come to him. And we lift up the name of Jesus. And when Mary comes here, it was more than just an act of the ointment. It was more than just washing your feet. And when she came to him, she was lifting up the Son of God and said, He's my all in all. He's my everything. He's my everything in my life. I love him. And it brought honor to it all. You know, today I believe too often we're just so busy at the church that we fail to really worship our Lord and Savior and lift Him up. You know, I heard a preacher a good while back. I was listening on the radio one day, and he made this statement. It really stuck with me. And he said this, so many people are at church, but those same people never get in church. And I begin to think about that and how true that is. You know, a lot of people show up at church. But they never get in church. They're busy doing everything else. They're busy running here and there. They're tied up with the children at the church. They're tied up with this. They're tied up with that. And they never take time to come to Christ because they really want to come. They never truly get in. They never come to a place where they come to Him and lift up the name of Christ. They're so busy 
But I'm going to tell you, friend, he needs to be worshipped tonight. We ought to lift him up. Hey, I don't care what the circumstance is. I don't care what the situation is. Hey, tonight it ought to not change who he is. And it does not change who he is. Your circumstance will never change who God is. And we ought to just come to him and lift him up. I'm telling you, our churches are way behind on worship. We ought to worship him. We ought to come into God's house. I like what old brother Mays Jackson used to say. He said, glory to God. He said, I'll shout at the drop of a hat and I'll I'm at the drop of the hat. Glory to God. We ought to worship Him. We ought to come to Him. We ought to take every opportunity God gives us down at the house of God to lift up the name of Jesus. You know what our youth need to see in our hour? They need to see a mom and daddy who will worship God. Amen. They need to see a mom and daddy every now and then who might lose their dignity a little bit. Hey, glory to God, and just have a shouting spell or a fit down at the house of God, not because they're mad, but because they're glad. We ought to worship Him. We ought to worship Him. But tonight you may be in a place in your life, said preacher. I kind of find myself like Mary here. I just got a, something in my life tonight. I just want to pour my heart out to him. And I want to love on him. And I want to lift him up. Oh, friend, I'm telling you, let me say something tonight. And I'm going to kind of run a little rabbit trail here. In the uh, book of Revelation, chapter 5, we find this John began to see around the throne of God. And said, right in the midst, there was a lamb as though it had been slain. And John looked in the midst of all of heaven. And right in the center of it was Jesus. And everything in that scene revolves around that Son of God. Amen. You know what heaven's going to be? It's going to be worship. It's going to be about the Savior. And we might as well, while we're in this life as a child of God... Go ahead and worship him. Say, preacher, my circumstance, my situation in life is just too bleak right now. I just don't, I just don't have it in me. I'm going to tell you, you know what you need to do tonight. You need to crawl down to an altar and come to the feet of Jesus Christ and say, Lord, forgive me for my little pity party I've had. Forgive me for thinking my situation something you can't control or something you can't do. And, Lord, I'm going to come down to an altar tonight and I'm going to pour my heart out. God, I'm going to lift up the name of Christ above every name. I might not be in the muster of I may not have nothing but tears, but I want to lift up Jesus. Amen. I want to lift up the Savior tonight. Hey, he's worthy this evening. May I say again, he's worthy tonight. There's nobody more worthy than him. As much as we see today, isn't it amazing how man wants praise and man wants to be patted on the back and wants his name in the lights where everybody knows who he is. But tonight, friend, I'm telling you, hey, they put on their pants the same way you do. Hey, they listen, they'll die one day just like you will. But glory to God, I know a Savior tonight. Hallelujah to God that defeated death. Hell in the grave. And we ought to worship Him. I'm telling the church we ought to worship Him. You want revival? Start worshiping Him. Hey, you want revival? You want your lives changed? Begin to edify the Son of God. Oh, to make a difference. To make a difference. I'm amazed in our hour how so many folks praise everything else, but they're afraid, they're ashamed to praise Jesus Christ. One of the greatest needs of the New Testament church today is that we would just come in a place of humility again. You know, the Lord, Lord spoiled us. You ever thought about this? We were just spoiled. I had kids I grew up with in school. They were just spoiled. They were spoiled rotten. They went out and wrecked a car. Their daddy had them a new car the next day. It didn't matter what it was. Bought them everything. They were spoiled. I'm glad my daddy said, boy, I'll have to get a car, but you're going to pay for it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Made me appreciate it. I didn't spin the tires on it because I knew I had to put new tires on it. I didn't go take it in the mud because I knew if I tore something up, this boy was going to be paying for it. And I didn't have the money to do it. You taught me some responsibility, glory to God. But I'll tell you why to keep you humble. It may have to keep you, keep you a little bit humble. And today, God's to support us. Man, church got everything we need today. We got the greatest buildings. Man, I'm telling you, we got, we got membership. We got good bank accounts. We've got everything in the world. And if you're not careful, you'll get puffed up with pride and say, Oh, my, look what, what we have. I'm going to tell you what. You tell the church that will get broken before God. I don't care if you got a million or two million dollars in the bank. I don't care if you got 5,000 people going. I don't care if you get involved in every ministry in the state or the nation. Glory to God, stay humble and stay at the feet of Jesus Christ because there is no higher place than at the feet of Jesus tonight. Stand up Amen. to Christ. Come to where he is. Glory to God. And tonight you may need something. I, I know in a congregation this size, there's folks that come in here tonight, you're a burden. There's folks coming here tonight that something's going on in your life. You may not even share it with anybody. Nobody, even your pastor doesn't know. And you're sitting here in this service tonight and you say, boy, I sure need something from God. 
I, I, I just need to come to the feet of Jesus. Ain't no better time than tonight. I want us all to stand this evening. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Well, if y'all come, to, y'all come just to the instruments for some song of invitation tonight. Listen, I want to ask you this evening. So, preacher, I come to church tonight, and I got to be honest. I need to get at the feet of the Savior again. I, I, I need to crawl up to Christ. Because I need some help tonight. Listen, we're in the God's house. We might as well chunk, I'd already said, let's just chunk our pride. Let's just put everything aside tonight that would hinder us from coming to God and say, I'm just going to, I'm going to grab my family by the hand. I'm going to get my wife. I'm going to grab my children. We're going to come down the house. We're going to come to the altar in the house of God and say, Lord, I want to get up close to the feet of Christ tonight. Lord, I want to honor you. I want to lift you up. Don't worry about what your neighbor is beside of you might say about it. I'm talking about just come get close to him. He'll make a difference in your life. He will change you for time and eternity. There is no greater place than at the feet of Jesus tonight. Young person, you may be here and say, Preacher, I'm going through something in life. I've got something going on. And I'm not listening. You're young. Listen, we all, I don't care if you're 10 years old or whether you're 90 years old tonight. We all face things and deal with it differently. You may be a young person here tonight and say, I just need God to do something for me. I need a prayer answered. And I, I'll tell you, listen, young person, it won't hurt you one bit. You'll lift up the name of Christ, love Him, and adore Him, and honor Him, and give Him the glory for everything in your life. Oh, it's wonderful. No higher place than at the feet of the Savior tonight. You willing to give Him your heart? Do you love Him tonight, church? Do you love Him? I tell you, do you love Him with everything? I'm not talking about just a little bit. I'm talking about tonight. Does He mean everything to you? Is He your treasure in your life?